Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the SMCV100B DAB Testing. This presentation shows how to use a Rodian Schwartz SMCV100B vector signal generator to create digital audio broadcast signals. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of DAB technology and concepts, and in particular, the role of the ETI or Ensemble Transport Interface. If you're not familiar with DAB or ETI, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding Digital Audio Broadcasting before beginning this presentation. The Rodian Schwartz SMCV 100B is a compact vector signal generator that can be used to generate a wide variety of both audio and video broadcast signals. And this includes digital audio broadcasting or DAB signals. These signals are generated using either an internal or external modulation source. The SMCV is operated via a touchscreen and intuitive graphical user interface, but it can also be remotely controlled over VNC and supports industry standard Skippy based automation. Although all SMCV models support all broadcast standards, two license options are needed for the testing described in this presentation. Option K519 to enable broadcast standards, and option K156 for DAB. The first step in generating DAB signals is to go to the baseband block in the SMCV's user interface and select TDMB DAB from the list of available modulation types. Clicking on this block will bring up the TDMB DAB dialog and a simple toggle switch is used to enable or disable DAB modulation. Note that like all other signal generation tasks on the SMCV, both the RF output frequency and output level must be set, and the RF output block must also be turned on. On the SMCV, DAB signals are generated using the information encoded in the ETI, or Ensemble Transport Interface format. This is an Etsy standardized interface between the output of a DAB multiplexer and a transmission network provider. The SMCV supports three different data sources. The first is an external ETI input signal. The second is by playing back a file containing ETI data. And the third is an internally generated test signal. These sources are selected and configured under the Input Signal tab. Let's start by looking at how to configure an external source. There are two methods for connecting external sources. The first is connecting to the User1 BNC connector on the rear panel of the SMCV, and this signal must be in one of the formats shown. Alternatively, the ETI data can be streamed into the SMCV via its LAN interface. In this case, an additional tab will appear for configuring IP addresses, ports, etc. The input signal dialog also contains information about the number of streams, transmission mode, etc. in the externally input signal. ETI data in the form of a file can also be used as a source by selecting TS Player as a source option. Two stream file libraries are available from Rodian Schwartz. The KS10 library contains standard DAB streams and the KS11 library contains DAB plus streams. These libraries can be directly downloaded from the Rodian Schwartz website, but playback requires the appropriate license file. The playback of these stream files is controlled via an intuitive audio player type interface. The stream files can either be played directly from an attached USB drive, or they can be copied to the SMCV's internal storage. The third source type is an internally generated test signal, and this is configured under the Test Signal tab. Various PRBS or pseudo-random bit sequences can be inserted into the test signal, or the signal can consist only of a string of zeros. Note that network mode must be MFN when using an internal ETI test signal. We'll talk more about this in just a few slides. The Input Signal Info tab shows the individual parameters for each subchannel within the ETI source data. 
This display is informational only, and the fields are not editable by the user. The displayed fields start with the subchannel ID given in hex. The protection profile used for each stream, that is, equal error protection or unequal error protection, is also shown. Following this is the protection level, which is either 1 to 5 for UEP and 1A or B through 4A or B for EEP. The final column shows the data rate for each subchannel in units of kilobits per second. The network tab is used to configure the network mode, which can be set to either a single frequency network or a multi frequency network. As we mentioned a minute ago, mode must be set to multi frequency network when using a test signal as the source type. The SMCV also supports the optional TII or Transmitter Identification Information Parameter, and both a main and sub TII can be configured. Note that in the case of a single frequency network, the SMCV supports GPS based synchronization. The GPS receiver's one pulse per second output is connected to the user 2 connector on the rear panel, and the receiver's 10 MHz output is connected to ref in on the SMCV. In this case, remember to also configure the SMCV to use an external reference frequency source. The last tab is Special Settings, which, as the name implies, are used for less common or non-standard parameters. The Transmission Mode, that is the set of OFDM and framing parameters, is derived from the mid of the ETI signal by default, but Transmission Mode can also be manually selected. PRBS Test Signal transfers a PRBS signal instead of using the input ETI data, and Test Signal SCID is then used to set the subchannel or stream ID containing this PRBS signal. Let's end with a brief summary. The Rodin Schwartz SMCV 100B vector signal generator can be used to generate signals according to the Digital Audio Broadcasting or DAB standards. Three different modulation sources can be used. An external ETI or ensemble transport interface stream can be fed into the SMCV either over a BNC connector or via an IP data connection over the SMCV's LAN interface. A stream file containing ETI data can also be used as the input, and predefined stream file libraries are available as options. The SMCV can also internally generate an ETI test signal as well. Once source is configured, information about each stream is displayed in real time. The SMCV supports operation in both multi-frequency and single-frequency modes with an external GPS receiver providing synchronization for single-frequency networks. And finally, the SMCV allows configuration of additional settings for non-standard testing scenarios. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with the SMCV 100B DAB Testing. If you'd like to learn more about DAB, broadcast standards testing, or vector signal generators from Rodi and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at rodi-schwartz.com.